in a modern gaming system, you might have one PCI lane for something like this. A graphics card. This is an old G4, GeForce GTX 970. Maybe you have two or a high-end desktop that can support three or four. Well, I'm here at Giga.io today where you can support hundreds, not for gaming, but for high-performance computing. This is the way servers will be composed in the future. What's your minimum specification? So here you have me holding what is an uh, A100, one of the high-end GPUs in machine learning. Uh, and normally you'd see two, four, eight of these in a system all connected to PCIe via one host. However, is that really the limit of modern computing? What if you could extend PCIe? And we already have this. You may have heard of PCIe switches before. You have one PCIe switch connected to a CPU, takes in eight or 16 lanes, and you could expand that out into 16, 32, 64 lanes even, and then gain a whole set of access to more devices through that. Therefore, you can have one host that may be one CPU that has 128 lanes. If you use enough PCIe switches, you can move up from eight to 16 to 24, CPUs, uh, one CPU to 24 GPUs. But the point is, you have to go and build the boxes in order to do that. You have to go build the servers. A modern server will have two CPUs, maybe eight GPUs at the high end, some I.O. And you have to configure your systems, you have to configure the systems you need based on what ratios of CPUs to memory to GPU that you can do. What they're trying to do at Giga.io here is something a bit different, and it's to do with, it's called it composable infrastructure. I'll put this down, this is actually quite heavy. The whole point about a composable infrastructure is you just have one central, essentially PCIe fabric, and on top of that, you can supply CPUs, you can supply GPUs, you can supply memory, you can supply storage, and it becomes just this one big fabric. Now, in the past, we've kind of seen this sort of with PCI switches before. Uh, the PLX9000 series had this thing where if you chained multiple switches together, you can just connect host, GPU, memory, storage, and then depending on what you need, especially as, say, an environment like a cloud service provider or HPC where you're designing workflows, you could take maybe two CPUs and then four GPUs and then a terabyte of memory and 10 terabytes of storage out of that fabric for your use, and then whatever's left in the fabric, somebody else can spin up a host and use that. Now, when I spoke to PLX about this way back when, this was like five years ago, and we haven't really seen it come to the market in any real way. This is the idea of a composable infrastructure, and that's kind of what they're doing at Giga.io here. What we have is a 24 port, 24 by four PCIe 4.0 switch that sits at the top of the rack. It kind of looks like this. So this is like a 75 watt switch. I'll put up some B-roll. Uh, but at the heart you have some silicon and then at the front you have what is essentially PCIe ports. So each of those ports is essentially a PCIe 4 by 4 link. We've seen PCIe expanders in the past where you can essentially use these PCIe switches to get more GPUs. This is more of a network fabric topology. There are a lot of buzzwords you can put in here. But the, the, the idea that at least Giga.io want to come across, and I think it's actually quite relevant, is normally when we talk about a server, we do talk about just simply a 2U or a 4U box. With this sort of network switch, with the topology, with the software they're creating here at Giga.io, your single system becomes a full 42U rack. And in that, you can connect any number of CPUs, any number of GPUs, any amount of memory, any amount of storage. And you can build any number of essentially infinite type of uh, computers for the users of that rack that you might have, have had to supply very specific configurations in the past. Now, one of the key aspects here is memory. Now, normally when we boot a system, whether that has uh, 32 gigabytes of memory, 64, 128, 256, or up to two, four, six terabytes, you're stuck with that memory from the time you boot it on. What uh, the folks here are trying to do is when, if you want more memory, more dynamic memory for your system, you can have a pool assigned to you. So if you're working in machine learning and you need 10 terabytes of memory, you can just take it from the pool 
And if you're managing the infrastructure, you can simply add more memory to the pool over time as and when your company buys it, or you can take memory out, say you want it to be a bit more of a GPU heavy infrastructure, then that can be done as well. The concept of, of, of this is more to do with single rack systems. People look at this topology and they think, well, why doesn't it go across the whole data center? And that's kind of a mix between what PCI can do versus maybe what an Ethernet or a, a you know, Mellanox type fabric can do. That will go across the whole of the data center. This really works ideally within a single rack or across at least two racks anyway, where you can have a number of resources that are dynamically allocated to what the hosts need. Now on top of this, you obviously need a software manager to do all this, and for those of you in the HPC crowd, you know, you're used to Slurm and other aspects like that, you can put in what resources you need for your workload and it will wait until they're ready, or you can say if you, your workload can be deallocated if needed for other people and reallocated. Because it's kind of that enterprise HPC thing, it is more complicated than a simple home system. Whereas a simple home system, we may just be used to you know, one GPU and one SSD and maybe some memory. The point here is that systems can grow. Systems can grow and grow and grow. So if you need 1,000 cores, if you need 10,000 cores, if you need one GPU per core, then the way the future of um, server infrastructure is going to have to go is along this route. Now, for those of you who are trying to pinpoint exactly what goes on in one of these systems in your head, you may be thinking about, well, hang on, the memory is no longer near to the CPU, there's added latency there. And I have spoken to the, to the guys here about this, and they've said that, yes, for some workloads, that's really, really important. Your, your latency to main memory or your latency to your GPUs and how your GPUs con connect to each other is really important if you're dealing with nanoseconds. But over their PCI fabric, you can still do that communication within microseconds. And especially if you have a tiered system, you'll be able to cascade that out into depending on which tier you need. So the kind of workloads these guys are doing is not for that really high-end, right at the edge case use. It is purely for single rack, full systems. I mean, I, I, I can just imagine a system where, okay, a rack is 42U. You have your topper rack switch, with, so you've got 41U left, and say you do a, 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 like a butterfly topology, maybe you take another couple out of there for switches. So you've got about 40U to play with. In each U, you can essentially put two uh, blades, and each blade has two 64 core, 128 thread systems. So that's 512 threads per U, and you have 40 U of those. So that's 20,000 threads, all acting as one system over PCIe. Now that's pretty insane, but it's guys here at Gig.io who can do something like this, and they're working on scaling out for customers. Now, for some of us, this is, yeah, it's still going to be a bit pie in the sky stuff. Um, I've been able to go around here, see some of their network. They've even got a server in that room called Beer, aside from most of them are actually named after fish. But it's the fact that you can just rock up to a rack, have a PCIe backplane, and put in whatever system you need, whether that's another eight GPUs, whether that's uh, NVIDIA or AMD, or whether you need uh, FPGA accelerators, or you just need to add in another two terabytes of memory into your pool. And the Topology just sorts itself out. That's the idea goal here. And this is how data centers of the future will have to be built.